Alright, so welcome back. Uh, in this video we are going to discuss the most basic structure or the most basic way to categorize prompts uh, in terms of prompt engineering. So, um, I mean, prompts can vary a lot. If you go ahead and ask ChatGPT to generate uh, a way or uh, to generate uh, different categories of prompts, you'll get lots of categories because there are prompts that are based on questions, prompts that ask ChatGPT to generate a story, prompts that, you know, uh, ask ChatGPT to give some specific details, prompts that ask ChatGPT to give some questions to back to the user. So there are lots of prompts you can use in ChatGPT. But now the question is, what's the most basic way to categorize prompts? And I had to go back and forth with ChatGPT a bit uh, to end up to this structure. Um, and I call it the basic prompt um, structure, or I mean, it's better to call it the basic way of categorizing prompts. So. How, how i mean what are the most what are the biggest uh, categories of prompts um if i shall say what are the categories of prompts at an atomical level uh, then we have two main categories the first one is called open prompts and the second one is cl is called closed prompts now, how do these two categories uh, vary? Um, well, they're different because uh, the, the, the open prompts uh, tends to be those prompts that don't have enough specific details. Uh, and you mainly would like to use them um, so that you don't limit what ChatGPT or any other software, AI software can do. So. Um, Basically, with open prompts, you allow ChatGPT to um, generate as output a lot of stuff. So basically, it will have to choose between lots of things. Um, uh, so, for example, open prompts could be useful when brainstorming. You don't have a specific idea or topic. You just want to brainstorm, brainstorm lots of ideas. So ChatGPT can uh, use those open prompts to generate you uh, different ideas, right? Now, this, these are exceptions when talking about when you should use open prompts, because you can imagine that there are more moments when you should use closed prompts than open prompts, because closed prompts are what actually give you the wanted result so closed prompts are basically all of the prompts that do have uh clear instructions uh, or more correct more correctly said they tend to have conditioning you add conditions that limit um the way that uh the ai software uh, can generate the output so basically you tell to the software to the, to the ai which path to take. So for example, you could add uh, at the beginning of your prompt a specific topic and then the, uh, the AI will have to generate the response based on the topic you provided it with. Um, so basically we will work mostly with closed prompts just because open prompts are the most basic way to write prompts. Uh, and they're not really useful unless you want to brainstorm ideas. And even then, open prompts tend to have some conditioning. Um, so you see, open prompts are basically... It's not that they don't have conditions, it's just that they don't have too many specific conditions so that you don't limit uh, the ability of the software to go in whatever direction it wants to go. Basically, you don't give it a topic. You allow the software to take 
whichever whatever path it wants to take but even with open prompts uh, there are some conditions you can add and even then they could be still called open prompts because just because you leave the software to take whatever path it wants to take now we will uh, get to the following video the following lesson where we will discuss more about that so um let's leave this for now um let's go ahead and try some examples all right so so now he's writing me a story about Elena. Elena had always been a bit of a wanderer. She was born into a family that loved to travel. And as a child, she had been all over the world. Yada, yada, yada. So um, here is an example of an open prompt. I didn't specify which path ChatGPT should take when providing me with this story. So that's the main difference i mean that's the only difference um now i will stop generating or i mean it stopped itself uh, now let me show you an example of a closed prompt so i will say the same thing write me a story about elena that teaches kids not to steal so now this could be considered a closed prompt because I don't allow ChatGPT to take whatever path it wants. I gave him um, this instruction and you might uh, hear me saying or referring to ChatGPT as him sometimes. I mean, you can refer to ChatGPT as him or her or it. Why do I tend to do so? Why do I tend to personalize it? Well. Um, I will explain that a bit later in the course, uh, but you know, I mean, if you hear me saying or calling ChatGPT him or her, I mean, whatever you want, whatever it's uh, more easier for you, uh, then um, just make sure to follow the course so you'll understand why I tend to do this. Uh, but anyway, um, here we have another story which have which has this condition. It has to have this um this moral in the, within the story and from that day on Elena knew that stealing was wrong she learned that taking something that didn't belong to her could hurt others and make her feel guilty interesting story actually i just read it anyway so <laughs> um you get the point the difference between an open prompt and a closed prompt that's it mainly I, I basically shaped the whole story um, and it's considered that giving prompt a topic isn't uh, making it a closed prompt but when you add or when you um, I mean when you add this kind of conditioning where you have a huge impact on the whole outcome of the story um, then you can consider it a closed prompt. So that's it pretty much with this video. See you in the next one where we will talk about uh, open prompts and why even open prompts tend to have conditioning and conditions. So see you in the next lesson.